Why is the sky blue? How do fish breathe underwater? If I ate a watermelon seed, am I going to grow a watermelon in my belly? Now, when, when I was a kid, I'd ask these kind of questions. And in fact, when I was seven years old, I swallowed a watermelon seed. And what followed was an entire day of panicking that my belly was going to explode from growing a watermelon. It was a very traumatic day for seven-year-old me. Uh, but that's the story for another day. Now let's bring your attention to this slide. How many kittens do you see? Most people would immediately answer three, but that's because society encourages us to always be ready to give answers. The question that you should have been asking, and hopefully a few of you did, is why is the speaker showing me pictures of his cat? Now, this instinct to question everything, it comes naturally to us as children. Every experience is new, and curiosity allows us to explore the world and new learn new things. However, at some point, we stop questioning the world around us. We stop being curious. And it's a serious issue because it's this desire to question and explore the unknown that really drives innovation. Now, this issue is rooted in how we form our world of knowledge. So in our world of knowledge, there's the things that we know, there's the things that we know we don't know, and then there's the abyss. So the abyss contains everything that we're completely unaware of, the things that we don't know we don't know. And as a kid, your world of knowledge only exists in the abyss. Your mind is a blank slate. And as you experience the world, you start to file things into the things that you know or the things that you don't know. And as you get older, these two buckets of knowledge grows, and it shapes the way that you view the world. And you start to think that you understand how everything works. But the problem is, as this happens, we choose to stop exploring the abyss. We choose to play it safe in the things that we know, or focusing our energy on learning the things that we don't know. And, and, and I get it, you know, the abyss, it's this dark, uncharted territory, and it can be a bit scary. But it's in the abyss where we could find the new ideas. It's in the abyss where true innovation can be discovered. Because anything else that you already know or you don't know, these are just existing ideas that people have already thought up. As the CEO of a startup, I see my role as an explorer. And my company, Nanoleaf, is like a kid trying to explore the world to f figure out its place and its purpose. So every day, we spend it exploring the abyss. You know, how do we create products that people will love? How do we make an impact? Which direction should we go? In order to figure this all out, we need to be constantly questioning how things are done and asking, is there a better way? Back in 2013, I started Nanoleaf with two of my best friends. And we wanted to make products that could make an impact on the world, particularly around sustainability and lighting. And I remember uh, walking through this lighting trade show in China and seeing a sea of light bulb companies. And their products all look the same. Your typical boring light bulbs and not very energy efficient. And we, we knew that the underlying LED technology had the potential to be at least twice as energy efficient. So we wondered, why aren't they doing it? Why couldn't it be better? And could we be the ones to improve it? So for the next few months, we set off on a mission to build a better light bulb. And we started with some simple questions. Like, does a light bulb have to be round? Does it have to be encased in glass? How do we make an LED bulb more energy efficient? We ended up with this. It was twice as energy efficient as any other light bulb on the market. The three of us, we won awards around the world for having the world's most energy efficient light bulb. And true to our goal of sustainability, it was built to last for over 30 years. Looking back, I think it benefited us that we had never created a light bulb before. Because without any prior knowledge limiting our imaginations, we were able to explore the abyss 
and, and create something that the world hadn't seen before. Right? So for us, for us uh, thinking beyond what people had today allowed us to create something that the world hadn't seen before. And after we created our first light bulb, we started to question even the light bulb itself. Now, if you think about it, before the light bulb was invented, to get light inside, people used candles. It was a single focal point of light that you either put on a table or you hung on a wall. And after the light bulb was created, it effectively did the same thing. You'd either screw it into a lamp on a table or you'd hang it on the wall, or sometimes you flip it upside down and put it on your ceiling. And for the last 100 years, we continued to model light after that, the candle. Now, the existing light bulb companies, they all had years of experience making these incandescent bulbs. And the incandescent bulb, it was designed this way for a reason. It needed the glass dome so that it could block off the oxygen from the filament. That way, the little filament wouldn't burst into flames. And you needed to screw it into a fixture because the, the thing heats up to 300 degrees, right? But with LED technology, all of that became irrelevant. So why were people still making light this way? Why were they just stuffing this complex LED technology into the shape of a light bulb to create light? It's because they stayed in the things that they know. Light comes from a light bulb. They didn't bother to explore their abyss. So again, we took advantage of having fresh eyes to look at the problem, and we dove into the abyss. And we asked ourselves, what is the best source of light that we have today? And on most days, it's the sky. You know, we've all been there, sitting on a beach on a bright, sunny day, watching the sunset with its bright reds and oranges and purples. Or just last month, I went to Iceland, and we drove for hours to catch a glimpse of the majestic colors of the northern lights. Nothing gets better than natural lighting from the sky. So why not model lighting after that? Why not model lighting after the sky? And we ended up with this. These are the NanoLeaf light panels. Each panel gives off soft, comfortable light. They're modular, so you could put them together in any shape to form a canvas that emulates a window or a skylight. And you could have light and color flow through them to create effects, just like the sky. And for us, this was our way of shattering the traditional way of lighting and thinking beyond the light bulb. For us, asking the right questions allowed us to, to spur our minds to think beyond what the world has today to create something that the world hadn't seen before. And my favorite thing is when I see someone set up their light panels for the first time, and inevitably they would break out in a huge grin. And it makes me happy to know that we created something that brings joy to people's lives. We launched this at the MoMA Design Store in New York, and now it's being sold all over the world in places like Best Buy, Apple Retail, Home Depot, and many more. And it's mind-boggling that something as simple as a light bulb, something that's in every single room that we step into, can stay pretty much unchanged for an entire century without somebody questioning, is there a better way? And it really makes me wonder, what else is just beyond the reach of our imagination? The thing that I love most about exploring the abyss is that it actually encourages us to stay open-minded. And what I mean is more on a personal level, not on a business or a product development level, because every single one of us has a different world of knowledge. Something that you know may not be something that I know. And something that exists in my abyss may be something that somebody else knows. And there's a beauty in exploring your abyss through interacting with other people. Whether it's meeting someone from a different country or talking to someone from a different walk of life about their challenges and their ambitions. And I imagine this is why people watch TED Talks. It's to see the world through someone else's eyes. It's a humbling thing because with every person that I meet, I wonder, what can I learn from them? And the fundamental element of this is understanding that what you know and what you don't know is so small compared to the vast expanse of your abyss. So I encourage 
every one of you to look upon the world with fresh eyes, an open mind, and an open heart. Treat your abyss like a playground, because what you'll find may change your life. What you'll find may change our world. Thank you. Thank you.